cloud specialist, ZW Technologies. Today, I'm going to explain you the major services we have in AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate level. Here we go. So here we go. We are in the console and uh, I'm going to explain you the major services we have in AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate level. The first service is Amazon EC2. This is something, uh, this service is called Elastic Compute Cloud. It provides scalable computing capacity in AWS Cloud. Using Amazon EC2, which eliminates, you need to invest in hardware upfront so you can develop and deploy applications faster. So you can use Amazon EC2 to launch SMS, as many or as a few virtual servers as you need. And you can configure security and networking and manage storage. Amazon EC2 enables you to scale up and down to handle changes in requirements to spikes in popularity, reducing your need to forecast traffic. So this console is uh, have a lot of features and benefits. So here we have running instance. So you can see here it supports virtual computing environments known as instances. And here we got pre-configured template for instances that is known as Amazon AMI. That is called Amazon Machine Image. That package the bits you need for your server, including operating system and additional softwares. And if you, and I can see and, and here we got various configurations of CPUs. When I select the instance type, you can see we got various configurations uh, of CPU, memory, storages, and networking capacity for your instance known as instance types. And and on and Amazon EC2 provides the secure login information for your instance using the key pairs. Here we go. And AWS stores the public key and store the private key in a secure place. And when we talk about the volumes, here we can see the volumes which is here. And the volumes is again the storage volumes for temporary data that is that's deleted when you stop or terminate your instance. So when you're launching the instance. So let me launch one instance here. So this is the key pair that he is asking. So right now I'm not going to launch. Here we go. And that's why. So and as I told the storage volumes for temporary data data that deleted when you stop or terminate that is called dot stone as instant store volumes so when you stop the instance you can see this is something called uh, instant store volumes that we have and I can say that multiple uh, physical locations for your resources in EC2 such as called Amazon EBS volumes that are available here that is known as regions and availability zones so this is a region and this is our library zone. And I can say we got a, in EC2, we got a firewall that enables you to specify the protocols and ports and source IP ranges that can reach your instance using the security groups we have here. And this is something called a stateful firewall. And in AWS, we got two types of firewall, stateful firewall and stateless firewall. And we have something called a elastic IP that is really you know the elastic IP is, is something uh, we can say static IPv4 address for dynamic cloud computing that is known as elastic IP and then we got a metadata so when you launch instance and so we got a tax and tax is so important for you recognize your machine so metadata known as tags that you can create and assign to Amazon EC2 resources. And Amazon EC2 is tightly integrated with our Amazon VPC. 
because virtual networks that we can create that are logically isolated from the rest of AWS cloud and that you can optionally connect to your own network such as VPCs. So such as when I go to EC2 and when you're going to click on any machines like Windows or Linux. So I click on that and here you can see you got a lot of stuff is going on here and uh, you can just easily manage your instance from here. And that's the that's we have and uh, EC2 is the console that we are going to interact most of the time and we are going to run and you're going to have a high level services like elastic load balancer and auto scaling. Next, we are going to discuss about Elastic Container Service. Elastic Container Service is a highly scalable fast container management services that makes easy to run, stop and manage Docker containers on a cluster. So you can host your cluster on a serverless infrastructure that is managed by Amazon ECS by launching your services or tasks using the forget launch type. So here we go, we got cluster stock definitions and repositories. For more control, we can host your task on a cluster of Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instances that you manage by EC2 launch types. And Amazon ECS lets you launch and stop container-based applications with simple API calls, allows you to get the state of your cluster from a centralized services and gives you access to many familiar Amazon EC2 features. So we talk about uh, features of Amazon ECS. So we have a lot of features, you know, Amazon ECS uh, is a regional service that simplifies running application containers in highly available manner across multiple availability zone within a region. And we can create Amazon ECS clusters. So here Amazon ECS clusters within a new or existing VPC after cluster is up and running, we can define task definitions here that and services that specify which Docker container images to run across clusters. And container images are stored in and pulled from container registries which may exist within or outside of your AWS infrastructure. So that's we have uh, Amazon ECS and the next one we have is Lambda function. So, so speaking about Lambda function, Lambda function is, is I can say that it uh, lets you run code without provisioning or manage, managing servers. You pay only for compute time you consume. There is no charge when your code is not running. So with Lambda, we can run code for virtually any type of applications or backend services, all with zero administration. Just upload your code and Lambda take care of everything required to run and scale your code within with high availability. So you can write your code and attach with existing any uh, any runtime, so like Python, Node.js, and also with Java. And when we, when we speak about more on Lambda, Lambda function has no server to manage because AWS Lambda automatically runs our code without requiring you to provision or manage servers. Just write code and upload it to Lambda. And we have continuous scaling here. So when you talk about Lambda functions, we got continuous scaling. And the continuous scaling is, is something I can say that AWS Lambda automatically scale your application by running code in response to each trigger. Your code runs in parallel and process each trigger individually, scaling precise the size of the workload. So we can have n number of functions here and we have sub, sub second metering. With AWS Lambda, you are charged for every 100 milliseconds, our code executes a number of times your code is triggered and don't pay anything when your code is not running. So very simple to create a functions here. So you can have any runtime and you can have existing one. So that is uh, uh, that is given by a permission by IAM, create a function, and then you can have the, your function, any function, any runtime function that you have and Lambda is going to execute it conveniently. So here you're going to have your code and then you're going to run it and you can have CloudWatch events attached uh, with Lambda and it gives more flexibility to run the code on the particular time or minute. So that will gives you uh, 
more flexible options for this lambda function to get triggered by CloudWatch events. Next here we have Amazon S3. So Amazon S3 is, is a simple storage services that have a simple web service interface that you can use to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. So when we talk about Amazon S3, Amazon S3 is, is a regionless service and Amazon S3 intentionally built with a minimal feature set that focuses on simplicity and robustness. And you can see how uh, I, have, I have created some buckets. So you can see we can create bucket. So creating and naming the bucket and inside the bucket you're going to store data. So buckets are fundamental container in Amazon S3 for data storage. And I can say that store data in the buckets, store an infinite amount of data inside the bucket, upload as many objects as you like into Amazon S3 bucket and each object can contain up to 5 terabytes of data and each object is stored and retrieved using a unique developer assigned key. So when you click on this and you can see we got the uh, uh, what all things we have stored here, it will be shown here. So if I go to some other bucket. So you can just upload your data, what other things you have. Okay, I'm going to upload some small one, so you can see. Uploaded and uh, as I told that uh, uh, each, uh, each of the data, Amazon S3 will provide a assigned key. So that key is important. And when it comes to down, downloading data, so downloaded your data or enabled others to do so. So download your data anytime you like or allow others to do the same. And we got permissions here. So when I click on that permission, so we can see there's permission grant or any access to others who want to upload or, or download data into your Amazon S3 bucket. So grant upload and download permissions through three types of users. Authentication mechanisms can help data secure from unauthorized access. So that's why we have different types of access things. When come down, we have a VPC. VPC is, is something is called virtual private cloud that lets you provision a logical isolated sections of AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. So you have complete control over your virtual networking environments uh, in, uh, that including sections of your own IP address changes, creation of subnets, and configurable of route tables and the internet gateways. So you can use both IPv4 and IPv6 in your VPC to secure any easy access to resources and applications. And in VPC, you can easily customize the network configuration for our Amazon VPC. So you, you can have uh, you can have public facing subnet on your web servers that can access to internet and place your backend systems such as databases for application servers in private facing subnets with no internet access. So we so you can leverage multiple layers of security, including security groups and network access control listers to help control access to Amazon EC2 instance in each subnet. Additionally, so we can create hardware VPN. So we can create hardware VPN between your corporate data center and your VPC and leverage AWS cloud as an extension of your corporate data center. A variety of connectivity options exist in our Amazon VPC. So you can connect your VPC to internet, to a data center or other VPCs based on AWS resource that you want to expose publicly and those that you want to keep private. So, and we have, uh, we can have public subnets and private subnets. So public subnets, you can launch instance into publicly accessible subnet where they can send and receive traffic from the internet. And we can connect to internet using a network address translator, private subnets. So private subnets can use for instances that do not want to directly addressable from the internet. So instances in a private subnet can access internet without exposing their private IP address by routing their traffic through NAT gateway in a public subnet. And moreover, we can connect securely to our corporate data center. So we can have a secure connection. So all traffic to and from instances in your VPC can be routed to a corporate data center over industry standard encrypted IP security policy hardware VPN connection. So we can connect privately 
to other VPCs, peer VPCs together to share resources across multiple uh, virtual networks owned by you or other AWS accounts by creating a peer connection. And privately connect to AWS services without using Internet Gateway, so NAT or firewall proxy through VPC endpoints. And available AWS services like S3, DynamoDB, Kensys, Streams, Service Catalogs, EC2, System Manager, Elastic Load Balancer, API, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, and SNS. So privately connect a SaaS solutions provided by AWS Private Link. And in via VPC, so AWS VPC is flexible because privately connect your internal services across different accounts and VPCs within your own organization, significantly simplifying our internal network architecture. So that we have about VPC and then here Route 53. Route 53 is another major service we have in our, in our AWS certified solution architecture. Uh, every, everyone ha must have to know about this Route 53. So this is a DNS management, traffic management and domain registrator. So Route 53 is highly available and scalable cloud DNS web services for Amazon. It is designed to give developers and business an extremely reliable and cost-effective way to route end users to internet applications by translating names like converting IP to name and name to IP. So Amazon Route 53 effectively connects user requests to infrastructure running in AWS. So such as Amazon EC2 instance, Elastic Load Balancers or Amazon S3 buckets. So can also use to route users to infrastructure outside of AWS. So we can use Amazon Route 53 to configure DNS health checks. And also we, uh, and also we can able to uh, route traffic to healthy endpoints or to independently monitor the health of your application as its endpoints. So Amazon Route 53 traffic flow make easy for you to manage traffic globally through variety of routing types including latency based routing, GeoDNS and GeoProximity and weighted round robin. So we can have records and you can see all the routing policies. And all of this which can combine with DNS you can easily manage how end users are routed to our application endpoints whether in a single AWS region or distributed Amazon around the globe. Amazon Route 53 also offers domain name registration. You can purchase and manage domain names such as uh, any domain name and Amazon Route 53 will automatically configure DNS settings for all your domain. So like that we have a few, a few more services that is important services that you have you must know to get passed in AWS certified solution or to associate exams. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the session.